What is the crack, man? How are you? I'm hanging in there. You sell oil? Nah. Sell everything they want to give you? Nah. I'd like to buy it, but I can't yet. But I'd like to. But I mean, I'd like to buy it. I'm kind of long Canadian, so I think that maybe that correlates. I don't know. Uh yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone does talk about that correlation, but it's kind of like it, it works when it doesn't. Or it works, yeah, when it doesn't. Just like all of them, just like all the correlations, yeah. they work. Do exactly. They don't. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So I ain't too worried about it. I'm long Canada, that's whatever. I got my monthly yeah. statements today. I made one trade last month. <laughs> I, my, my whole monthly statement was one page. <laughs> Baller, man. What was the trade? I got long Canada. Oh, oh, right. So you're entering into that. Right. When, when, did, that was, when did you get into that? At the end of the month? No, it was like mid-month at some point. Somewhere down, yeah, somewhere around mid-month. Okay. Nice. Sorry, I, think just... was, I think it was the uh, I think it was this day right here, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was this fucking day right here, which is like the uh, the 22nd of November. So pretty late month, I guess. 21st, 21st of November. Yes. Not 22nd, 22nd of November. <laughs> yeah, 22nd. Okay. So they they were oversold in Cad, eh? On the loony. Yep. On the loony tunies. What's yep. going on in Canada, man? Apparently the the house that I follow this TikToker, right? And it, the TikTok is buy a Canadian, buy a house in Canada or this uh, castle in France. And every week he comes out and he compares like a, a bungalow in Toronto or somewhere going for like, you know, 900 grand. And it's like a not impressive two bed. And he's like, or you could buy and then cuts to this, you know, 12 bedroom well-appointed French chateau with mature gardens for like, you know, 800 grand. Yeah, with about $800,000 a year of upkeep. Well, yeah. Who the hell is taking care of all those freaking gardens? Yeah, get a couple of Menti traders. <laughs> Before the U.S. <laughs> opens, you gotta go get garden go done. Cut my hedges and I'll teach you how to trade spoons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. There you go. Any anything else strange or new with you? What's that? Anything else strange or new with you? Oh, how was Las Vegas? It was all right. Yeah, it was pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. I saw David a couple of uh, speech, pictures. Gave his speech in front of a bunch of people, and you know, it was all right. We, it was we had a good time because a bunch of guys from my Discord came out. It, and we all hung out. We are and, going and great on really employment time. side of the Fed's mandate. Sorry. Sorry, turn off the squawk there. Did you leave the hotel? Uh, only because they were selling cigarettes for eighteen dollars in the hotel, so I went across the street to the Walgreens and got them for twelve. Eighteen dollars for a pack of smokes, Jesus! Casinos, man. Wow, you want to go digital? Get a get a get a vape, man. One of these. You've been doing these for about five years now. I got a vape right here, but it's not tobacco. Oh, uh, that's a beginner's vape. That thing. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Getting ready for my weekend. Nice. I have one of them in the car. <laughs> Oh, I gotta, go to, to, I gotta this. go to New York tonight. So, oh yeah, what's going on in New York? Uh, you know, my daughter goes to goes to college there. She majors in dance, and they have their like end of semester dance recital or whatever. Oh, nice, very nice. Did so you that's... tread the boards as a young man yourself? Start with the <laughs> Did you tread the boards as a young man? That tread the boards for yeah, a little bit of Jason Shapiro in uh, dance school, eh? Oh, hell yeah. Where it comes from? Dance school, man. I'm like the freaking, what do you know? I'm like the John Travolta of New Jersey, bro. <laughs> like the Kevin Bacon of uh, Kevin Bacon of New, New Jersey. Jersey. Uh, uh, actually, Patrick Swayze. I'm more like Patrick Swayze. Oh, uh, Swayze. Uh, the, your big ball in the there, man. No, one's <laughs> than, no one puts baby in the corner. That's exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, anyway, we'll cut the preamble here because... I'd uh, asked Jason with a little bit of intrepidation because I, I I didn't I wasn't sure if he was going to go in for this sort of pseudo forecasting or not. But um, the reason why we're talking today is to kind of do a 2023 wrap and review of what the hell went on and kind of have a little look at 2024. So um, of course Jason has prepared a 50 slide uh, deck presentation, which. Um, actually just got lost moments before this call and uh, uh, same for me as well uh so you're not going to be bored with uh, any excel presentations on this chat it's just really going to be two guys 
who might sound like they know what they're doing, but uh, we're just out here, you know, guessing make money like the rest of you. And um, yeah, I thought it'd be good to kind of just have a look back at 2023 in any capacity, um, you know, how it was for Jason, how it was for me. And then what we're looking for, you know, and things that happened and then what might happen in 2024, maybe some good trades to look out for in 2024. And that's it really. So um, 2023 in review, Jason, how was it for you? Um, It's not over. It's not over. I've still got four weeks to completely fuck it up. Um, But uh, yeah, no, I can't complain. It was, it was a good year. Um, you know, I think that obviously the whole story of the year really was the fact that everybody came in so mega bearish, the stock market, um, so convinced that the recession was coming and so convinced that that was going to be bad for stocks. And um, to me, that was the fuel for the for the entire year. I mean, a good portion of my money was made in the first half of the year, long stocks. Um, I was out in June. Um, that made me a good portion of money. I spent the next few months whipping around, basically getting nowhere. Um, and then in the last sort of two months, I've uh, I've had a good run with very, very few trades. I really have been long Swiss franc for two months. And this month I added long Canada to it. Uh, so I had a, a decent uh, October and I kind of was had a from June, July, August, September. I was down a little bit, not very much, but a little bit. And that was all made up for in September. And then I had a nice, a real nice month uh, in November. And now I'm hoping that I don't completely... Uh, Give it all back in December. <laughs> Put it all on black. I mean, I, I literally have two trades on it. I, I can't can't screw it up too badly, but as soon as you say that, you do. You know, so um, yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see. It, it should be. Uh, it should end up being a good year. So, and it was a good year to have a good year. Clearly, because I think a lot of people struggled mightily this year. I think so. Yeah. I mean, for for me, just a lot of trading on oil, and then I actually wanted to focus on oil this year, but. Um, really, you know, both, both kind of short and long, um, and then working some spread strategies where, you know, I'm just kind of directionally agnostic, but, um, then the bank, I, I, I had a bit of a thesis off of, I think it was when we tried to test the highs on the DAX and it looked really weak when it kind of got up around there. I think that was around March. And then I was just like, I'm selling this thing and I think I want to hold it. And, and then next thing, the banking crisis kicked in. Silicon Valley Bank within 48 hours were getting raided by the, or not raided, but they were shut down by um, governments. And uh, we ran to the downside on equities. And, and that was that was a nice trade, to be honest. Held that one for like, I don't know, two, two weeks maybe. That was nice and was able to work in and out of it and reload and run it down, reload, run it down. And um, yeah, that was nice. And then for me, on oil, I missed a really key spread long because I, was, I went out on a trip and I just kind of totally forgot that what I had to do and missed out on a on a very nice trade. And then when it came to flipping that short, I was back at the desk, put on max size on that one because I was underslept. You know, we have a new baby in the house this year. I just completely fumped the ball on the short and just overworked the trade and just just flattened out after like four days. Uh, made money on it, but missed again the opportunity just from being underslept. And after that, I've kind of just resigned as a trader. I've just kind of resigned to the fact that I am going to be really tired and I can't be going full size into stuff and kind of operating on peak performance as, you know, or my imagined peak performance or normal performance because I'm just not going to be well slept enough. So I don't know. Maybe that's something on the psychology side and, uh, you know, for people to think about. Yeah. I mean, I'll say that the, uh, the low light of my year was that I really, I missed a trade that uh, I had no excuse to miss and, and I missed it. And uh, it was a freaking home run. It, it probably, uh, I mean, I'm probably like, I think I'm up about 14, 15, 14 and a half percent or something. I don't know. Somewhere around there right now in the year. And this would have been like, nice. I would have made, I would have made like 6% on that fucking trade that I missed, which was the British pound short um, in the middle of July. I, I just fumbled. I hesitated. I fumbled and I missed it. And, uh, it would have added like a good six, seven percent to my returns, and it's a lot of money, and it hurts. But uh, you know, look, man, that's the lesson. Sometimes we we, we fuck it up. You know, the, the key thing is to you know not uh, not let that. That's well on it, you know. No, that's right. I mean, you can make it. Don't make it worse. You know, it is what it is, and I yeah. don't mind so much when I have trades that don't work because that happens all the time. But to miss a trade is uh, is just bad, bad discipline, and just bad. 
and uh, it, it bugged the shit out of me for a very long time. And I finally got over it, and then people on my Discord started asking about it again. And I was like, oh, thanks for bringing that up. I really appreciate it. It took me two months to fucking stop thinking about it every day, and I appreciate you guys bringing it up again. But in, in truth, it's it, it's good because you, you want to keep remembering, you know, to stay disciplined and, and not, yeah. not, not fuck shit up like that. So that was yeah, kind of the low light of my year, but um, – other than that, it's all good. I can't, I really can't complain. I'd like to, but I can't. You can't, I mean, for me, I, I just can't, like, I, I don't spend time dwelling about it. I mean, I might, I might have, actually, I don't even have any regrets. It's just the way, it's just the way life fell at the time. I was under step. There's nothing that could have been changed about that, you know, and um, fine. I, you know, I, I, you I survived, man. Great. That's the main thing. And that's the main lesson, right? You fuck up, but you survived. So you're still yeah. alive. You're still trading another day. It's like I say that to people all the time, man. I go, what you got to do in this business is stick around long enough to get lucky. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, if you it's like, yeah, if you run out of cash, man, you haven't got tools to go to work. You don't. So, you know, protect those tools. That's it. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't dwell on the 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 one I missed. You know, there's going to be other buses. You know, lots of buses all the time. It's just just got to wait. I, I, you know, with me, it's like. Because I make money less than forty percent of the time, you know what I mean. It's see, I never miss the ones that freaking lose, you know. So I, I have to, I have to catch the ones that uh, that make because my whole year is made on four or five trades, right? Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I, I really, it's important for me to catch them. Um, so I was a little right. pissed, but but fortunately, fortunately, I think my hit rate was probably a little bit higher than normal this year. So therefore, my returns were good anyway, even though I missed a big one. Okay, that's amazing. Well done, man. Yeah. I mean, making four or five trades a year, that's that's incredible. Well, I don't make four or five trades a year. I make money. Or I make, you know, all my P&L. So you're making on, money on the four or five? I make, I, I make Actually, all just, my P&L on four or five trades a year. Just out of interest, how many kind of trades do you get into win, lose, or draw a year on average? Do you know? Probably like around 20 to 25. Okay, cool. All right. What was your best year? I think uh, 2015 um, was my best year that I can remember. And that was simply because uh, of one trade. You know, I, I caught that Swiss franc long when Switzerland intervened. Oh, when, they, the, when the dollar decoupled? Well, when Swiss decoupled from, from or Europe. Swiss decoupled, yeah. And, oh, you know, I, I, I put that, literally, I put that trade on Friday afternoon on the close. And uh, I turned on you the screen. open limit up for like three days, didn't it? Forget limit up, dude. I, I, I woke up on, you know, I mean, I, I turned on the screen Sunday night. The thing was up 30 points. You know, I was risking less i was risking like a little more than a half a point on the trade i think i was risking like maybe 0.7 of a point on the trade um to the mm-hmm. lows and uh yeah i woke up and it was up 30 times so um, about 60 to one roughly yeah like 40 something to one yeah 45 to one or something like that so um and i didn't get out at the top but i ended up it ended up being like a 30 or 35 times so, yeah. risk reward. so i made like 15 percent or something just on that trade and then the rest of the year, I just kind of did my normal. And then so I ended up, you know, making like, you know, whatever, 30 something percent that year or something like that, which uh, I'm That's still so waiting. Funny. I'm still waiting for the next one of those. Because the firm I've I been waiting since at. 2015 for the next one of those. The firm I used to work, well, I don't know if I can, well, I won't name any names, but I used to work in a firm that um, a trader, his strategy was to sell it when it went up to the, up to the, up to the, like there was a certain price that it was locked at because of of the coupling with the dollar. Yeah. And he would just sell into at that high and work at mean reversion back down. And he got caught with his pants down on that trade. And a few people did. He went limit up for like two or three days. And then when it opened again and they could, could get out, they made a decision to average into it. And then it lifted again. And I think it cost them a lot of money. I would bet it did. Although, the, you know, the funniest part of it, I always, I quote this trade a lot because, A, I like to talk about it. Um, but, but B, because, uh, you know, in the end, within three, four months, the Swiss franc went right back down to to where it came from. So the, the, the fundamental change actually mm-hmm. meant absolutely nothing. You know, the only thing that it mattered had- was that they, they, they were super short and they got squeezed. It was all, it was all a positioning thing, in my view. It's the only reason yeah. I was in it. You know, it was the only reason I was in it. And uh, once the positioning came off, which only took, you know, a week or two because everyone got squeezed out of it, the thing went right back down the lows. But surely that was in place for a while, that peg. So surely you were always seeing uh, the Swissy crowded when it went to the that high, no, on the short side. 
it really didn't get to where I like it, which is this maximum crowded levels until uh, all right, until about two weeks before that happened. Wow, interesting. So, um, we'll get your forecasting hat now, the tinfoil forecasting hat. Yeah, I like the look yeah, of. You know, I, I don't for twenty four or <laughs> what? Do you, what do you think is 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 looking hot to happen for next year? It's it's. It certainly isn't as easy as it was last year, but um, mm. in particular since last year's already gone, so I can't be wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it feels to me like shit just wants to go. That stocks just keep wanting to go higher, man. That, that, that sort of feels to me. We're, we're getting a little bit overdone here, but um, I don't know. I, it feels to me like people are coming in with the same shit that they came in with last year, which is the recession's coming and that and that whole freaking yeah. stuff. It feels like it's creeping right back in there again. Now the difference is we were on lows at the beginning of last year and and we we're gonna start i don't know what's gonna happen in december here but uh you know if, if this were the beginning of the year well, we'd be starting at highs so you know it's a little bit different clearly um but let's see happening, i think though, is that i think december is going to be interesting because i think if they can uh i think if they can whack these people that are trying to front run year end a year-end rally and the market can fail to year-end rally and actually go down in december then I think there's going yeah. to be massive bearishness, and uh, and that will probably be very very bullish for for at least the first part of next year. You know, it's always difficult for me to say, oh, here's what's going to happen over the year because I base my forecasts on on what everybody else is doing. So until I know what they're going to do, I don't know. You know, but yeah. if they were to get, uh, you know, they're getting a little bit nuts here on some of these things. You see, like the, the AAII has the least amount of bears we've seen in a very long time, and what's um, the AAII? It's like the investors' intelligence. It's just a survey, but you know we're, oh. we're we're getting a little bit possibly frothy here. I mean, the Dow, the, the position in the Dow yeah. shorts yeah. has been massive. Um, now yesterday might have had something to do about that, or, or the last few last week or so, it might have had something. We'll, we'll see how how they react to that, right? But yeah, um, well, the Fed speak catapulted it up kind of two what on Tuesday. It just started catapulting. I think we had a day yesterday. Yeah, yesterday was the real and yesterday. Day. Well, yeah. And so then, you know, it's all going to kind of for me depend on on that. It, it would be super nice if they whacked these uh, people that are front running the year end, and and the market came down in December and got a ball super bearish again. Um, and I think we could have a really good certainly first quarter anyway, and then we'll see how people react to it. But I still think the bears are bearish. You know. Um, <laughs> They haven't. I mean, they They're haven't always given, bearish, man. They're always bearish. That's well, that's why the market thing. always goes up. You know what I mean? Well, once they give it up, you know, at some point, then we can maybe look to get short. But um, until then, I, I don't really see any real reason to be bearish. The stock market, you know, the market's going to go up and down, yeah. obviously. But um, I don't see any major reason to be bearish. The stock market here. Um, I think it's been and, and I'm not long. I'm not long here either. I don't have a position, so I, I, I don't care. I'd love to. I'd love to see it go down, like I say, and get people bearish into year. You know, screw these, screw these people that that are trying to front run the year and rally. Get them out. Get everybody short again into the whole recession is coming argument, and then uh, we can just sort of repeat last year. <laughs> you know, yeah, um, that would be nice. Now well, it never. We're already to. talking about cuts coming through and. Uh... March or May, March, yeah, March, May, and June. So, yeah, I think, um, I think personally, yeah, what's his name? What's his name? Bill Ackman is like saying that we're going, we're, we're cutting rates in Q1. Okay. So, Bill Ackman wasn't on the Federal Reserve, is he? He's, um, he's not, no. And now everybody wants Bill Ackman to be their guru because he, he got the, the last trade right where he got bearish bonds and he got out of that bearish bond position very, very well. So, um, yeah, it's it technically and, and, and from, people fall victims to this all the time, you know. One guy makes a good trade, and then now it means that now every single thing he says is going is going to be right from now on. Um, yeah. I, I I personally believe as soon as the guy some, does something like that, it, it lowers the probability that his next trades are going to be right. Um, just look at Burry, right? Burry made one good freaking trade, and he was a hero. And after that, you know, the guy spent ten years long gold, and it went nowhere, right? So um, yeah, yeah, you know. I don't put much. I think, though, you know, I, like every other time that they talked about cuts happening and the market was kind of looking for cuts to happen, we were just so, it was just so early in the fight on inflation, you know, the war on terror, if you like. And if you listen to the FOMCs and Powell, they were never, they, were, they weren't even talking about cuts or what did they say? What was the line? They weren't even thinking about thinking about cuts. 
You know, I'll tell you what, man, I'll, it just I'll, didn't I'll, make say, sense. I'll say it again. If they cut the long end of the curve is going to get crushed. That's the one thing that I, I would believe very, very strongly. If they were to actually cut in March, yeah, that's going to be the most bearish thing for 30 year bonds in history. So um, I welcome it because I am not short bonds. I have not been so short. And we're just going to get a whopper of a yield. Yeah, I would love to see bonds keep going up all the way into an anticipation of a, of a rate cut and then let them yeah. cut the rates. And, uh, and then it just tanks. Yes, I would be looking to sell bonds right into that. Now, that's that's months away. So I got to sit here and I got to wait and I got to figure out how I'm going to uh, pass the time in the meantime. <laughs> but uh, I would love to see that. That, that that'd be That'd be awesome. That would just be a gift trade. I so I think that there's really the, the the one thing I wrote down about this call was long bonds. I think for me the main chart to look at for whole the whole of 2024 is going to be the ten year. Oh yeah, ten year no doubt about it. That, and I, I think it's going to rally for the next three months for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then there we go. Th that all makes sense. I could see the stock market rallying for the next three months. Bonds and stocks rallying. That would be wonderful because it would help, theoretically help my dollar position. And then, bang, then they cut rates. Boom. And then you can sell the crap out of it. That would be almost too good, you know, almost too easy, right? And then would we, would we but then, you know, yeah, actually, it doesn't matter. The whole the whole bonds to equities trade is totally dead. You know, long, long bonds, short equities, short, bo uh, short bonds, long equities. I think that I haven't seen that in a while. Actually, no, those those correlations have gone out the window, man. Um, yeah, but that just what everybody says that right? that's when that's when no return, right? I mean, for me, we'll have to see where people are. I, I would think that if we kept going up all the way into March, mm. that shorts at that point are going to just have to throw in the towel because if we keep going up into March, I mean, shit, man, the Dow's almost a, a, is almost at an all time high here. I I, I think look looking at thirty year look back uh, studies on equities, I think we're in the throes of the last uh, five bid days for equities on mm -hmm. average over 30 year look back mm -hmm. um so i i don't know does that mean we're, we're going to have a serious pullback in q in q1 or month one month two who knows i can't see it man i can't see it now. in the recession i just can't see it because i uh, that is too good <laughs> i've heard a lot of ba perma bears who were bearish this entire freaking year and didn't give up once the entire way say that okay the stock market can go up because of year-end rally but that will end up being the greatest sale in history <laughs> that's what they believe so that ain't gonna work man sorry it ain't gonna work how gonna how the hell do they stay liquid in these positions man i have no frigging idea Be because they're commentators that's why <laughs> i mean are they working spreads i don't th i just think they're talking about it and they're not actually trading it it's probably That's true. Thing. I mean, my boy Dan Nathan has a thing where he, he puts his uh he has to put his uh disclose his his positions. So um okay. so he trades something, but I'm sure it's tiny size, but it doesn't matter because he's wrong all the time anyway. The guy finally gave up shorting Nasdaq last week. He'd been doing it all year. Wow. He gave up last week and rolled his shorts into the spies. What? So in that time period, the spies are flat. So his premium is just getting eaten up because he buys puts and the and the Nasdaq's straight down. So what's the duration on the what's the duration on these puts? Let's see. Dan Nathan, my man, my main man, Dan. That, you should send him a hamper. He's got spy January put spread. What's the strike? It doesn't say. Well, okay. Hmm. But just pick the most typical strike that anybody would do, and I'm sure that's it. I'm sure he's bought like whatever. Forty fives, maybe. Right. Right, and then sold the ones, you know, whatever, 5% lower than that or something like that. You know what I mean? So whatever the most amateur yeah. fucking put spread trade would be is what what he will be in. Don, if you're watching this... Uh, you're a loser. <laughs> you're a loser, and if you want to change, then call me, man. Join the Doug and I'm, Capital I'm, I'm here Discord. to help, brother. I'm we'll, here to we'll help. We'll put you on man. the right side. We'll put you on the right side of the market. <laughs> Ouch. I'm here to help, brother. You think I'm here to hate, but I'm actually here to help. So uh, the big question on everyone's lips is, what did you get me for Christmas? I think that's what everybody wants to know. What the what? What you get me for Christmas. What did I get you for Christmas? What did you get me for Hanukkah? I I, I got... I I thought Hanukkah's a big holiday over there. I, I thought Hanukkah's a huge holiday in Ireland. Not, no, not, not at the moment, no. I'll tell you what. 
I'll get you one of these if you promise to wear it online. That's the CMR hoodie. Yeah, man, the CMR freaking, we got swag in CMR now. You got swag? What's going on? Seriously. Don't trade fate. Yeah, all right, bag one up for me and I'll wear that online. All right, you got to email me your uh, your address. I'll send you. I'll send I gotta you send address. It. I got to send it to the guy that... I actually, my uh, Shelby here, my partner, actually got an extra one of those. Uh, she heard you like my Coors Rodeo cap, so she got you one. So I got to send it over to you. All right, there we go. A little gift giving season. There you go. Yeah. Good to have gift giving season. <laughs> they got any Hebrews in that entire country or no? Yeah, man, I'm friends with the city uh, there, right? What do you call the city there? Dublin or something? Dublin, yeah. It's got to uh, be a synagogue in Dublin. It's about 2,000 years old. Actually, yeah. no, it's more. Uh, yeah, anyway. Yeah, no, I'm friends with a couple of two by twos, man. Don't two you worry by about twos. It. What the hell does that mean? Jews, two by twos. Oh, two by two, is that what you call them? That's the Cockney slang, yeah, two by Very twos. Say. It sounds like a Cockney thing, yeah. A uh, very close friend of mine. Look, he's like he's like a forty year old Woody Allen. And, that's what we all uh, are. I'm just Woody Allen. We're all a bunch <laughs> yeah. of Woody Allens, man. It's either Woody Allen or Jerry Seinfeld. That's what we are. Man. And uh, and he's in the diamond business. And I'm like, Tom, are you sure you're not Jewish? And he's like, No, I swear, I'm not. Definitely not Jewish. And then yeah. he was just at a Jewish wedding in in New York there, and I'm like. You serious? Are you really? You know, and then we went to Lebanon uh, on a boys' trip, and I was like, just calm it down with the Woody Allen routine. And when we're in Beirut, man, <laughs> but uh, he's a funny guy. Um, so yeah, we have Jewish people here. Good. You need, you, need, you need a couple of Jews in there, man. You need to have a good lawyer when you need a good lawyer or something. You know, you gotta, you gotta get him. Yeah. yeah diamond right. guy. You need a diamond guy. Yeah, got a diamond guy. Banker, but you know. all about labs now, man. Lab diamonds. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't buy diamonds. Yeah, it's it's a dodgy business, dodgy dodgy business. Um, all right. So, well, that's really our our review and uh, look ahead right there. It's pretty simple. So you can read all the bank reports you want. Um, but it's mind numbing stuff, and I've read three of them this week. And um, what are they saying? You realize last year was, the, I think, one of the only years ever I was reading where the consensus from the banks was that the stock market was going to be negative on the year. I don't think I read any reports last year, man. Yeah. So that I'm just uh, saying that was one of the only years ever where the consensus was that the stock market was going to be down on the year. Actually, when we were looking, when, when I did do a look ahead for last year or for this year, last year in December, the actually we were, we were talking about the real estate crisis then the commercial real estate crisis then with yes. you know we were forecasting fed and fighting the higher rates so right. and still hasn't happened now to caveat that what i didn't realize back then talking about the real estate commercial real estate risk was that the loans the bulk of the loans weren't rolling on their fixed interest rates until 2024 so actually, this year it's, it was a big fat nothing burger as of a concern, but in 2024 it actually is. A I, I think I told you before that I, I grew up with a kid whose family um, has become billionaires, and the way that they became billionaires was that they are the largest shareholder in the in the largest commercial real estate REIT in America. They got to own like I don't know how much of New York City, right? Every building is owned by these guys. Um, yeah. And um, while I don't talk to him. Um, uh, one of my best friends does business with him and talks to him all the time. They own some, my, my best friend was in the, his dad was in the uh, parking lot business in New York in the seventies when it was a shithole. And as this is all gone on, and as this is all gone on, he had like 30 parking lots and they've developed them into 30, you know, 50 story buildings. And they did it in partnership with these guys. So he told me what that guy said was that they're looking at handing back about 30% of the real estate that they own to the banks this year. Wow. 30%, Jesus. And you're talking about, you know, this is the biggest office REIT in the world. Mm. And, and you're talking about them handing about, back 30%. Because it's like you said, it's probably when the loans are, are, are recoming, right? So yeah. they're talking about so the interest rate. Right, yes. So, so the, just to explain to people, commercial real estate in the U.S., the, you can fix the, the term interest rate, but only for a maximum of five years. So you're in this situation where the bulk of these loans are actually rolling, are changing their interest rates in 2024. And they would have locked in these prices at around um, 
they would have locked in these prices at around uh what i don't know two three percent interest rates right. now the interest rates are shifted up to uh, i think it's between six and seven percent are the averages there oh and don't forget the uh the vacancy rates have been through the roof. You talk about like 30% vacancy rate in New York City, right? Yeah. So the math don't work. So they're just going to hand it back. So like these people that, this is the whole thing that's cracked me up about banks. If this is all true, right? And this is clearly a very bearish case. And I don't like to make bearish fundamental cases so much because they'll screw you up because you can make them all the time. But, um, you know, people talk about banks and they're cheap and look at their look at look at their price to book. I'm like, okay, that's their price to book before they get handed back 30 percent of the real the useless real estate in New York City. What's their price to book then? Here you go. Here's a trillion dollars worth of fucking commercial real estate. Put it on your books. Now's what your now what is your price to book? You know? Yeah. Because that's a trillion yeah. dollars not in positive. That's a trillion dollars in negative, right? Um, what are they going to do with these assets once they take possession again? Like these loans are non-recourse loans, whereas the uh, like a house mortgage is a recourse loan. If you don't pay, they take it back um, and they can go after you. With But with the commercial real estate, it's non-recourse, so they can just hand back the keys and there's no personal indemnity by the No, department. there's no personal indemnity. Of course not. They're all under LLCs. But, so but why wouldn't the bank they, they not want to just work anything. out a deal? Well, they, they will. That's what's going to have to happen. They, this is the great thing about this stuff. This is a lesson I learned in 08, you know? I never wanted to buy a house. I, I couldn't afford to buy a house. And starting about 06, I actually could afford to buy a house. And at that point, I was like, I'm not buying one of these freaking houses, man. They're, 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 they're so ridiculously overpriced, right? Yeah. And so I, I never bought a house, okay? Um, okay. But I should have, because the truth is, everybody who did, it didn't matter. 08 came, they couldn't afford it anymore, but the banks couldn't take them all back anyway. So they just let people slide. I know people that went two years, three years without making a payment on their freaking mortgage. Wow. And they never got hounded to... No, because the, 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 well, they might have gotten hounded a little bit, but the truth is the bank couldn't do anything. What were they going to do? They were going to take back, you know, 60% of the housing stock out there and put it on their book? They couldn't. They couldn't afford it. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. So, okay. So everything just kind of went on I ice. Just, well, can you still hear me? I can still hear you, yeah. Okay, I don't know what happened to the microphone there, but yeah. So you know, it, 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 it's it's like that. It's the same. The banks can't afford to take back all these this office real estate. What are they going to do? So something's going to have to happen. Who the hell knows? It comes back to the old, right back down to yeah. the old Fed bailout situation. You know what I mean? I mean, my dad well, retired. Could you, could you, my dad retired in the late eighties, and the way he retired, um, you know, he was a CPA for thirty five. Wow, 40, fancy, miserable freaking years, right? But. They, the same Partners. thing happened in the late 80s. The savings and loan crisis happened, right? They had way too many mortgages out there for all this real estate. It all crashed, and all the savings and loans went out of business. And what the hell were you going to do? And the government came in and started that. I forget. I think it was called the RFC or something like that. And they took all of that real estate from the savings and loans into their little coffers, Yeah. and, and they sold it. And my dad, that's how he retired. Him and his buddies got together and bought a whole bunch of that shit. Um, yeah. and, and, you know... They were buying like for like 30, 40 cents on the dollar or something like that. You know, wow. some, I remember because he, he did one right where I went to college and it was when I was in college. He bought this like condo project that was probably like, I don't know, let's call it 200 condos. And they'd yeah. only finished 150 of them. They bought this thing for like 30 cents on the dollar. They went in, they finished the rest of it and they rented them all out. Brilliant. And um, wow. that's the kind of stuff that's they were doing. That's, that's what my dad retired on. So I don't know yeah. what they're going to do, but. It's so silly if you really think about it, because you have a massive housing shortage in the city, and you have a massive overabundance of of, of commercial real Office estate. Blocks. Yeah. Does that take a genius to figure out? No, but I think the retrofit costs are kind of high. But that's because the builders see these guys coming a mile off, and they're like, "Well, fine, we'll help. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll bail out your boat here, but it's going to cost you." It's actually worse than that, too, because what my buddy tells me, who I was talking about, the guy who turned all his, uh, his parking lots into rental buildings, is that they don't, you know, they tell them if you're going to develop, the only way they will approve a building is X percent has to be affordable housing, right? Right, yeah. That's the government's way of trying to bring the housing yeah. costs down for people that can't afford it. Yeah, that here as well. Yeah, but my buddy's answer is, well, if I got to do 15% of affordable housing in this building then the economics don't work for me. So I'm just not going to build the freaking building. Yeah. Right? Like I, I'm not here to, he, he always goes off on this. He's like, do they ever tell restaurants that they have to give 15% of their meals away to, to, to people for free? 
He goes, because if you did, there wouldn't be any freaking restaurants in the city because nobody would be able to stay in business. The margins aren't big enough. He's like, these guys think that we're all these billionaire real estate developers, but our margins aren't huge, man. He's like, if my building isn't, you know, yeah. 90% leased, I'm not making money, right? So he's like, I can't yeah, but afford you know what? You know what? It, 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 yeah, but, uh, the hair, you know, yeah. Good old, the good old question of socialism when you talk uh, in an American context is like it's kind of semi evil, right? But I mean, in places it does work. I just think, look, if you have a really nice apartment block and you want to, you know, sell million dollar apartments, yeah, it's probably not going to work for you to like do 30% of like knock down cheap, affordable or social housing, right? You know, but um, there are places that does work. These are sort of okay. If you want to policies, we do that in then Europe a lot. The government then let the government build the freaking building is the point. You know what I mean? You can't put I, a private yeah. developer in there and say, "Here, go build this building and lose money." I, I think that uh, I think that we have that same system in Ireland and across Europe. Like, I, it's broken. It's broken because we we have serious housing problems here. Uh, I mean, that's why right, though. Uh, that's why you know, if you can't get yeah. a developer to develop a, a, a housing. Then, you know, I understand you want people to be able to afford housing. It, it, that, that's a very reasonable thing to want, right? Um, but yeah. You can't do it by forcing private companies. That's not what capital, mm -hmm. that's, that's just not how capitalism works, right? It's not how the invisible hand works, right? You, yeah. You're not going to tell me I have to go build a building and lose money on it. I'm not going to do yeah. it. You do it. Yeah. That's what the government does, right? But the, yeah. because the government doesn't have to have profit incentive, they have to have social incentive, Right. But of course, yeah. the government can't uh, can't do that anymore because they're freaking broke because they've spent all their money on fucking bombs and, and corruption and, and and you know and all that yeah. shit. So so they can't afford to do the that. Military anymore. industrial so, complex, man. Exactly. Really? So how is that my fault? You know what I mean? Like that's your fault. You fucked it up. Hey, you, got, you guys have wild. to you guys have to send another seventy billion to Israel as well. Don't forget about that paycheck that needs to go out the door, and another fifteen billion for Ukraine. So listen, don't worry about the kids not going to school in America. You just worry about selling that money abroad, you know. Don't worry about, you know, the fact that, you know, everybody's addicted to heroin and homeless and, 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 and the schools suck. Yeah, just send it abroad to bomb everybody. I know, that, that's, that's how some, it works. So some, something like, it's kind of not trading, or well, it's not trading related at all is, but, you know, this opioid epidemic is number one. That's still going to keep going on in the States and, you know, it's only going to get worse. And family I have in Arizona, or you know, and I grew up a bit, a little bit in, in uh, just outside Phoenix and Scottsdale. Spent a lot of time out there, but I was, uh, you know, I was talking to my family that live out there now, and I'm just like, "What's Phoenix like now?" And they're like, "It's apps, it's a shithole. It's it is absolutely destroyed. It's nothing like you remember." They're and, all every uh, city's like that. I'm going into New York in about an hour. And I'm not yeah. looking forward to it because the last time I was there, it's the same thing. Look, my daughter lives in this in this building, obviously. That's a, but the other door, thing, a the other thing is like right, this... outside, wait, right outside of it, there's a place right. She comes. We love it because she she's able to come out of her the front door of her building and right around the corner is the subway that goes right to her school. So she only has to go right around the right. corner. But yeah. on that corner, for whatever yeah. reason, that corner in between the subway and the corner has become a public fucking toilet for the homeless. Every time you walk by that corner, there's literally yeah. human fucking shit on the ground every time. Jesus. I mean, that's freaking disgusting, man. Yeah. Do you see what they did in San Fran for G's visit? They just they cleaned up. The shit. Where did they all go? I, I never heard where they all went. They sold them to Maine. I mean, did you the story about the guy that wanted to put up a public toilet? No. So he wanted to put up a public toilet. He owned a company that builds Makes like sense. outhouses or whatever the fuck, right? Yeah. Yeah. And by the time he got through all the red tape and all the regulation and all the this and that, it was going to cost, I'm making up a number, but it was going to cost them something like a million and a half dollars to put up a public toilet. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous, man. What the hell? Where was this? San Francisco? Yeah. That's he was ridiculous. donating. He goes, I just want to put up a public toilet down here so that our streets are not filled with shit. That's all I'm trying yeah. to do. Would have cost them a million and a half dollars to do it. I can get the state to do it. Why aren't they doing it, man? It's ridiculous. But the other thing is that I wanted to talk about, obviously, you got this homeless situation, but is Every day, every day, I go into Twitter or I'm on TikTok or whatever, and there's videos of like gangs of people going into shops and just taking whatever they want and then running out the door. All this looting. It's like a daily activity in the States. Right? Yes. No, it's, it's, it's... And because of these laws in, uh, well, not only California making uh, what shoplifting a misdemeanor, 
Bush. It's probably a lot of other sites, is it? I think it's like even less than this. To me now. Yeah, but it's it's, it's crazy, it's man. Just, so all these shops allowed. are pulling it's off the main allowed. street. It's just allowed. Yeah, no, I got to uh, I got to get it. It's a bull market. Yeah, me it's too, man. Jesus, bull market and shoplifting here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so I think that's going to get even worse. And you already saw that with Black Friday sales. All the bricks and mortar, it was a, it was a ghost town, but it but they had uh, new highs on online sales, right? So I mean, look, the writing has been on the wall there for years, but bricks and mortar is dead as disco. No, it's true. So all this stuff is very, very bearish, and I, I've made videos, and I'm sure we've talked about it. I know we have. You know, these are all very, very bearish things, right? The, the, Not for Amazon. The fact that you know society is essentially just completely fucking break, right? It's it's it's, and and they can't afford to stop it anymore. And there's no political agreement. Because but, of the whole let's get a reality check here. Like, is this just like two older guys? I mean, look, I, I'm. It could it could be slightly it different be. ages, but like. I'm a little younger than it, you. This, but... is, this, this isn't a case of now that I'm older, I'm kind of getting crankier and I'm going, oh, it wasn't like this in my day. I, no, I think it could be. Like it could be. I, say that, I say that all the time. I say that all this the time. This is a paradigm shift of like, you know, shit like this wasn't going on in the States when I was a teenager, when I was over there, or no, it wasn't, it really wasn't happening in Ireland. when. I mean, in the 70s, when, you know, in the 70s, we were like, a complete shite hole, right? Well, um, yeah, I, I re- yeah, I read about that, but yeah. Complete shite hole. So, um, what can you say, man? No one's ever gotten rich betting against humanity, as, as as screwed up as humanity is. No one's ever gotten rich betting against it, right? Um, it's oh, yeah. sort of incredible to me that the stock. It's not incredible to me because I don't trade based on this shit. But you could argue well, that it's well, sort of incredible that the stock market is on highs here. Um, but maybe you know. It, yeah, but you know what I'm going to say there is, you know, the stock market is not the economy. No, that's right. It's not any of that. That's market, right. And, blah, and the blah, truth blah, is, blah. you could even make the argument that if that's the case, I mean, you had that happen in what was it, Argentina or whatever, and the yeah. stock market went up five times, right? Because the money wasn't worth anything, so they wanted to put their money into some sort of form of real asset, right? So you, you could argue that it's that too, right? This is why trying to put these things into what the stock market is going to do is so very dangerous, right? Um, but all these things are definitely going on, and it's and it's sad. But I, I don't know. People adjust. I mean, I I say it all the time. Is this just me, an old guy doing what, what, what every old guy always has always yeah. done? My parents' yeah, generation like thought that my generation were a bunch of freaking morons. Their parents thought that their generation was a bunch of morons. All the way back to probably the beginning of time, right? And I say that yeah. to my friends all the time. We're always bitching about their kids and bitching about you know the whole woke generation and bitching about you know what guys bitching about lack of the son. woke. Uh, yeah, no, he's, he's bitching about his son who's got like some job and lives with his girlfriend in Brooklyn. They got like normal jobs or whatever, and you know they got a dog. And it's like, what the fuck do you need a dog for in Brooklyn, dude? You know what I mean? They got to, every, they can't do anything because they've got to go back and take home their dog because their dog's freaking out. <laughs> so now they're getting their dog a dog psychologist and all that. And he's freaking out oh, about what? it. The yeah, dog, like, that's what kids do nowadays, man. They're out oh, of their freaking minds. But, you know, so are we. And so was the one before and so was the one before, right? And it's always been this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Part, you know, try to bet against that. It's never been a winner. And my friends all tell me, yeah, but these kids, really? I'm like, okay. Our dad said the uh, same thing about us, man. A really good friend of mine who I've known since I was like 12. He's like a philosophy major and he's a sort of a equality rights sort of lawyer type of dude. He works for the EU Commission in Brussels. And I was just like, what is going on with like all this wokeism stuff? And he's just like, he's just like, this is just another transitionary thing that has always happened over time. It's just, we go along and then something new comes in and then we all go, what the fuck is this? And then it's just a transition period. And then everything's normal. Everything is a new normal. And then we go along and then suddenly we all go, what the fuck is this new thing? And then it's again, and we're just walking up these stairs of different things, you know? I think that's right. I mean, look, women never used to work, right? Now uh, women working is... Here we go. Here we go. Tim and Jason cancelled. No, we're, I'm just saying, right like, in the 30s, like, yeah. that was not a thing that really went on, right? That's uh, wonderful what women can do these days. And then it slowly, it, it slowly came along, and now, you know, women working is, is, is normal and expected, you know what I mean? But I'm sure that transition was a weird one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. just like your friend is saying, that that's, you know, that's what happens, but... 
Sure. And, yeah. And I was just, you know, one of my, I was at Thanksgiving and my wife's cousin is this uh, female in her 20s. Irish. Yes, she's Irish. Good. And her father um, has in the last, I guess, seven or eight years become like real, real religious, right? Super religious and mm-hmm. also super sort of trumped out and, and believes that, you know, Trump is, is, is God put Trump here to save us, right? Um, Jesus Christ. Mostly because of the uh, the abortion thing, right? I'll tell you what, God put Trump on the, on the earth so I could get a nine to one that he was going to win the presidency. Booyah. Was, but anyway, uh, so this girl, not girl, I guess, this young woman yeah. was telling us about this problem that she's having with her family right now because she met somebody from England online that has become her boyfriend. Okay. But the problem is her boyfriend is not a boy. Her boyfriend is a girl or was born a female and was a girl. Yeah. Okay. I decided that she is a boy, you know, and I didn't want to get into it because I was trying to be sympathetic, but you know, she doesn't have any kind of male genitalia. So what makes her an oil change in the engine? Okay. What what makes her a boy now? I I still don't get, but you know, she was just telling us about how her parents don't approve and they won't accept. And they, you know, so they, she hasn't really talked to her parents in, in a while since this whole thing went down and all that. Right. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, look, man, you, you got to understand, this is very fucking new to, to us, okay, to our generation, right? Like, to me, I could give a fuck. Go do what you want, whoever the hell you want, whatever the hell they got sure. down there. It, may, it makes no difference to me, right? But I ain't religious. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? Somebody that's religious, that's in my generation. It's you know a big I mean? deal. It's, a, that's it's a all big very deal new to us. Man. We, don't, we don't get right it. Now. I'm not even saying I get it. But I don't care about getting it. You know what I mean? You do what you want. I, I, I could give a flying fuck what you do, right? But, yeah. you know, again, someone that's your father and someone that's religious, and it, it, it's going to take them a while to to accept that, man. You know what I mean? That's just a fact. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's just a fact, you know? So um, it's strange, man. And, and is, yeah. that just, is that just, again, if you look at it from our point of view, you can say, oh, well, that's just a normal trend. People never used to accept, you know, trans people before, and now it's they are accepting him, and that's just a, a change in mentality now that eventually will just become the norm. Yeah. Is this well, just another all... one of those things? Yeah. Is this another one of those things? And and people that are of this age will say, no, this is not just another one of those things, man. This is different. This is fucking strange. Yeah, the, like it's, it's the end of the world. Boys and... competing in girls' sports just because they say they're a girl. You know what I mean? Like, none of the, you know, that they will make that argument. Um, yeah, well, those things will get teased out through the transition, you know, like, uh, and they are getting sorted out, like, you know, um, people who, transgender athletes aren't allowed to compete in rugby or now global athletics. Was, right. There were decisions that came through this year because it's just, well, dangerous. Um, I wouldn't let my daughter play rugby against uh, someone who used to be called Bill and weighs 300, 300 pounds. Like, no, hell no. Yeah. I mean, the ironic thing is, you know, it ends up screwing up women because in, in certain ways, because, you know, well, I think I feel the women whole are Title getting... Nine thing for the US, you know, Title Nine was when they said you had to have as many women's scholarships for sports as you had for men, right? Right. But now you got these people. I'm not going to call. I honestly them believe women are just getting short fucking changed by this, and a lot of and a lot of their they sports. are they're just getting they completely are. fucking short changed. You know, and, they are. and it's bad enough that they have to fight for you know equal pay as professional athletes, and you know, yes. like in tennis, for example, the disparity on the wages there is huge. But now they've got to compete with Bill, who's now Barbara. And he's just come off like the pro tour men's league. And now he's in the pro women's league. Like, well, fuck, you know, we just had somebody here. I think it was in Connecticut. Actually, the boy it was a boy who ran cross country and he came in like, I don't know, he came in like the top 10 in, in the state his freshman year for boys. And he transitioned and he won the girls cross country state championship this year That's by so like special. six minutes. The whole race is only 30 minutes and he won by like six minutes. Like what? You know, how would you feel if your girl was, you know, working her ass off trying to do cross country? I'd be, right? I'd be fucking fuming, man. Fuming. That's what I mean. So, you know, so. Yeah. But so, so we kind of came onto this though, where I was kind of talking about, you know, like yeah. what well, we started talking about, like the. societal breakdown. The societal breakdown. And we're kind of, I, I mean, I, it, I don't think that, you know, every generation of people has a moment where they go, wow, this, this is society's breaking down. We're not saying society's breaking down because 
people, you know, want to be transgender or uh, any of that. We're, we're talking about legal legislation changes that are now leading to shifts in civic uh, habits. All because they're running out of money. All because they've been stealing money all these freaking years, right? All because they have been wasting well, money. We are not running out of money because you're giving, you know, a couple of billion to Ukraine and a steady billion or two to, to well, or or a hundred to Israel. I mean, how are you running out of money? No, you're right about that. And you also have the largest amount, I think I'm sure you've seen it, the largest amount of money market funds in, in, in history, right? So there's clearly money out it's, there somewhere. Yeah, I just read that two days ago. Largest inflows in money markets ever. I think it, it, yeah. it's a misallocation of money over many, many decades, and eventually that comes back to get you. Well, we've talked about this before. I've done videos about this. Before. Um, eventually it comes back to get you. And so, you know, maybe it's a choice, coming, right? Maybe it's a choice. I, are you going to let the, the stock market crash and the bond market crash, or are you just going to let society in general crash? Have you read that book, The Fourth Turning? Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually think we're in that. I, I actually believe that now. I, I do too. I'm leaning into that, and and re and basically Dalio, he's basically on the same buzz. It's Have a, you read the new just, Dalio book? It. Uh, no, I haven't read it. I want to read it, but I haven't. I've I got to read it. These snippet. guys on my Discord keep talking about it. It sounds freaking hilarious. It's just so good because you know Dalio has been such a god the last five years with his principles yeah. and his books and all that shit. And finally, somebody comes out with the other side and says this guy's actually a fucking megalomaniac lunatic, man. Right, I, I gotta I've read. I heard that. that, yeah. Huh? I gotta, yeah, I gotta read. I've, that. I've heard sounds, that. Sounds too funny to be true. I, I, I gotta read it. That yeah, all was yeah. all happening right in the town I lived in. Dalio's uh, headquarters was right in Westport, Connecticut, where I live. But not that that means anything. But um, all right. I, I gotta. But he's read basically it. talking about the same thing. It just yes. he dresses it up in a different, broader way. Oh, he's talking and about then, the same exact thing. It's the and same that's thing. Fine, man. Like I'm all. I, I keep saying everybody, dude. I, I'm too old, so. It's not going to affect me very much. You know, my days are done. I, I was born extremely lucky because I was born after World War II, right? You, you can yeah. say I was born into Vietnam, but I wouldn't have known it because I was born. I was a kid. I was a child, right? I was a baby, right? But I was born after World War II. So I don't know anybody. None of my friends that I went to high school have died in combat, you know? Um, yeah. We never had any kind of, I mean, clearly America's always scouring up. Oh, yes, war anyway. Somewhere. Yeah, no. Yeah, anyway. Well, they're not going to because we're not, I'm not getting drafted now, you know? And my kids, fortunately, have just crossed the, the age. So, you know, I, I was born in a very lucky time period. So I, I can't complain. And, and I say to my kids all the time, you guys got to deal with this, man, right? This is for you to deal with because I'm done, you know? Well, whatever the fuck happens, I, I got my house in the country here and whatever. I'm done. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you, you guys got to deal with it. And so it's got to mm -hmm. be that, that fourth I'm turning. I'm just going to move. I just kind of moved to the country, so I got to say I'm pretty happy on the countryside. I didn't from living in Dublin for a long time. I, I didn't. Um, no, I, I didn't. I didn't think I'd love it as much. But I'm kind of. I've always been from the country. I grew up in the country, then moved to the cities, and but yeah. Well, I was a suburban boy and a city boy, so I wasn't a city boy, but I was a suburban boy, and we would always go into the city. And now, like I say, in about an hour, I'm going to New York City, and I, I just am not. I have no interest. I mean, other than I want to go see my daughter dance and support her, and I want to get the nice picking duck because I can't get that anywhere in Rhode Island. Um, other than that, I have no interest whatsoever. But yeah. my, my my daughter laughs at me all the time. She's going to do it when I get there today too because I say the same thing every time in the city. We'll be walking down the street, whatever, and I'm like, this place is a fucking shit hall, man. It's a shit hall. This place is a dump and a shit hall, and I don't want to be here. So I'm sure she's going to say that to me. The first thing she's going to say when I get there, she goes, is it the city of shit all? And I'm like, yes, it is. Um, You're just so, grumpy, man. You're just grumpy. Yeah, maybe I'm just I old know. and grumpy. I, I, maybe I'm old and grumpy, or maybe I just don't like walking around human feces. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe you're not just grumpy. Yeah. yeah. But like, all right. it, it, it is what it is, man. It, 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 the world's just going to keep spinning, you know? It's going to keep exactly. turning. Exactly. It's going to keep turning, so... In the meantime, I'm going to look forward to wearing one of those uh, snazzy hoodies, man. Yeah, you got to email me your stuff. I'll send you a, I'll send you a hoodie. I might just send you a T-shirt, though. The hoodies are a little expensive for a guy like you. T-shirt? Do, you know do you know how cold it is over here in Ireland, man? Fucking getting fucking short change from CMR here. What the fuck is going on with the T-shirt shit? <laughs> yeah, I look forward to wearing that once. <laughs> I'll send you like a, what do you call it? A crop, a crop top T-shirt. <laughs>
Well, I'm, I know what's going to happen here. I'm going to get reduced to a fucking keychain on Christmas Day. <laughs> That's what I'm going to get. CMR key ring. That's what I'll end up with there. You know, well, no, I'll, see, I'll see what he's got. I'll see what he's got in inventory, man. If the Coors Rodeo hat. It's off the table. It's off the table. We'll, we'll get you. We'll get you the hoodie if it's an in inventory. All right. I look forward to it. All right, man. Listen, if I'm not talking to you, happy Christmas, happy you Hanukkah, too. and you. Uh, everything else. And uh, we'll talk to you in the new year. See how you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Good Christmas to you and uh, and your new kids and all that, the whole thing. And to all yeah. those people at your Chris- Irish Christmas party, say hello from the homeland, from me. From the source. From, right from the mainland. All right. All right, man. Thanks. Jason Shapiro. Cheers, man.